Hello, and welcome to the Art of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane, and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop, and trust your intuition through interviews with other guests and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello everyone and welcome to the Voice of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I'm your host for the podcast. And yes, I am going to fix up that front intro because it still says the art of intuition. But anyway, that's okay. We'll get there. Um, Subscribe, like and share the channel so everyone can can start to understand what their intuition is telling them and helping them and guiding them towards, especially their life purpose. But today we have got some exciting news. We're going to be talking about essential oils plant and medicinal plants we're going to be talking about vibrational energy and this is something that's really close to my heart now we've brushed over on it before in other episodes but this time we're going a little bit deeper we're going to get a really good understanding and we've got the professional to do that so I want to welcome to the show Adora Adora welcome in hello Susan thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here with you all today oh wait you wait I'm going to be grilling you because I want all the answers (laughs) What fun. <laughs> but first of all, Adora, tell us how you've got to where you are now. Whew. Well, I can say it's been a long road. It's been quite a journey. Um, I, from a very young age, I have been enamored by plants. Um, I would spend time in the woods with the flowers and the trees and collecting little creatures from the streams around me. And it was a great place of solace, of comfort for me and of understanding. I really felt like I could understand the plants much more than I could understand the adults around me. And as I grew and and started to uh, come into my adolescence, I had a lot of challenges from the perspective of anxiety, of depression, Um, And a lot of the aspects of my early childhood family dynamics were coming to the surface and I didn't know how to handle them. And then flash forward to a couple of years later when I uh, found out I had endometriosis, like a stage four. Um, I was about 21 years old. They wanted to do a hysterectomy after a couple of surgeries where they weren't able to resolve the disease process. And I knew somewhere inside me that I was meant to have two children. So I said no to that. And um, and I deepened my journey of working with the plants, working with the essential oils and working with energy medicine. In fact, I um, I started the study a little bit more professionally of essential oils the same time I started a professional study of vibrational medicine. And I had my first Reiki attunement in the mid 90s. And after that, I could see these colors around people. And I thought, this is really incredible. How how can I learn more about this? And how can I understand how these colors change depending on people, how people feel? And how can I apply this to my own particular journey and some of my challenges that I have? So those are really the, the seeds of... Um, where these two passions, essential oils and vibrational medicine arose. And of course, the journey is always ever winding. Um, and the the great joy and passion has been intertwining them both, creating vibrational remedies from essential oils that are also energetically infused to awaken, elevate, heal, and transform, transmuting our patterns and ultimately elevating our consciousness. Wow. I, 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 I've jumped in um, because I want to get a clearer understanding for the listeners what vibrational medicine is. Now, we know what essential oils are because, you know, we see them all over the place. So we know what essential oils are. And we will go into that a little bit deeper because I know you can get a lot of crappy essential oils um, and you get obviously good quality ones. But you, you're talking about, and, and plant medicine, we we've, we've may, may have heard of the bark flower remedies. That's one of the ones I use. Um, but 
what is vibrational medicine? Now, I like I said, I have my own take on it. I love it. Um, yeah. But I just want you to explain a little bit more so people have an understanding of what vibrational medicine is. Absolutely. And this is such an important question because I think for this modality to expand in the, the pen, potential it has on the planet, we have to bring a practical understanding to it. And so if you think about vibrational medicine, many of your listeners may have heard of therapeutic touch um, or even Reiki, right? Reiki is much more commonplace now than it is when I began studying it in the mid nineties. And so we all acknowledge through all of the healing modalities of vibrational medicine, we all acknowledge that there is a life force. It might be called chi, it might be called prana, right? There's all of these different ways to, um, to terminologies for this, but it's essentially the life force or spirit that moves through us. And when, as we know, when we um, aren't feeling at our best, we have this sense like, oh, it's like uh, thinking about to Star Wars, right? The force, right? The for may the force be with you. Well, yes. that force is within us. And in moments of disharmony, it's not flowing freely. And so in the simplest terms, if you have a loved one that maybe a, a child that falls down and hurts themselves, well, our natural tendency is to put our hand um, on or close to the area of their wound. And we do that from a place of loving presence. So in its simplest form, vibrational medicine is being able to have positive intention to work with the energy and frequencies that are around us all the time. And if we think about energy, well, what is matter? right? Matter is energy in motion. Even our cells are constantly oscillating, are constantly vibrating. And so from this perspective, everything is energy, everything is vibration. And you might have heard the term, well, gee, I, I want to send you some high vibrations, or maybe this, this place that I just came to, it didn't feel like the vibes were very good in there. Well, just as if uh, you've been into a, a maybe an office or a home where someone's just had an argument, a disagreement, and you walk into that and you can feel the energy that's present. And how does it feel? It doesn't really feel good, right? And one of my very first understandings of this was when I was working in corporate America, right around the time that I had my first Reiki attunement. And I worked in frontline customer service for cable TV. And <laughs> yeah, so when people would come in and their television didn't work, oftentimes they would have a complete and under meltdown right there at the counter. Yes. And then they would leave. And small office, uh, myself and my coworker, after they left, it that energy affected us, right? Mm. So that is vibration. So one of my very first aromatherapy products was a product called Clear Away to clear the energy in that corporate environment. And it became one of my best selling products, um, not only nationwide, but overseas as well mm. with my, my previous brand and company. Um, but so I think these are some tangible instances where we can get a better understanding of what energy is, what vibration is, and of course, then what vibrational medicine is. Now, we can take that to a much more technical degree. For example, um, I've studied many different modalities of energy or vibrational medicine, but I, the quintessential program was the four-year university program with the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, which is in the U.S., uh, also in Oxford, um, London, uh, Japan, and a new location in Australia that just opened this year. And this was founded by Dr. Barbara Ann Brennan, who was an astrophysicist who worked for NASA, who through her own experience of awakening and intuition um, began to understand this, all these forms of energy and vibrational medicine, and then built 
uh, a curriculum. And in fact, her books, Hands of Light and Light Emerging, are really considered the premier encyclopedias of vibrational medicine. For any of your listeners that are curious, they are wonderful uh, resources of information. And so th this school actually teaches much more technical degrees of vibrational medicine from everything to balancing the chakras to psychic surgery to um, working with past life healings. And of course, uh, developing our high sense perception and intuition. Yes. Wow. So you actually did it in, as in a, a, an edu a proper course. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's my degree is in the Brennan healing science. So it was yeah. a really comprehensive program that is not only for four years in residency, but requires um, a significant therapeutic component because the school really takes you into the deepest parts of your wounding and the trauma because how else can you walk with a client to the places and depths of pain that they have in order for um, to illuminate a pathway out and beyond that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, things like anatomy and physiology and a number of um, psycho-spiritual dynamics are part of the program because it's really, it, it's the, the most, I would say, um, uh, internationally recognized program that is grounded in the science of the art of healing, if you will. Yes, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, and before we go any further, Adora, your website, if people want to connect with you, yes. is www.adorawinquist.com. Now I'll spell that out for you. It's A D O R A W I N Q U I S T. Dot com. Um, it will be in the description, but for those who are listening and can't see the little ticker tape going across, <laughs> that's how you can connect with Adora. I just wanted to pop that in before we go any further. Um, you. So you, you've talked about the vibrational medicine. Now, I, I'm quite aware, it, like you say, everything's vibrational. Everything um, has that sort of connection with it. So there is lots of different modalities that we can use that are working with the vibrations of plant life like you're saying there's plants there's crystals there's all different sorts of things reiki like you say um even the hands-on healing that they do they do hands-on healing that's all all part of that same sort of area so it's not if you've never heard of it before it's not new and yeah. and and like you said i love how you said that when when a child hurts themselves even when i hurt myself the first thing you, you do automatically is put your hand on it why? Why do we do that? And and it's, it's something that's so ingrained in us, so intuitive in us, that it's just that's what you do. And it's funny, but sometimes when you have hurt yourself and you've got your hand on it, you remove your hand, it hurts more, so you put it back on again. Oops, I've just lost Adora. She'll come back on. She's having a little bit of um, internet problems. But what she does is, is, is what she's talking about is just so relevant for, for nowadays. And when we when we do find that we have these um, hurts and, and injuries that we do automatically put our hand on ourselves, um, it is that form of vibrational healing. You have you have the intention behind you to put positive energy into that area. And that's what vibrational healing is a lot about. When we're doing Reiki, when you're doing Reiki, you have um, your chant or your the, the um oh, I've forgotten what the name of it's called but that is part of actually connecting within and sending in that vibration that that pure positive vibration into the body and when I was doing a lot of spiritual healing myself I, I call it spiritual healing but the same sort of thing vibrational healing um you can actually get a little bit of both too I did bone therapy when I was doing massage and um doing my natural therapies I used to do bow and therapy. And with bow and therapy, it's like you do a move over the muscle and you tweak this, you tweak it just a little touch. And what it does, it sends that vibration. So it's more of a physical aspect to the vibration. And you send that vibration down the muscle and through all the um, the areas of the body and it and it allows it to change because you're doing it in a positive manner and you when you're doing bone therapy there's areas there that you 
lock off so the the emotion the uh, vibration doesn't go past it uh so you can block it in and then there's other areas that you open up to allow that vibration to move through so while we're waiting for adora to come back she will come back i know that because uh, <laughs> we did discuss this she said she was having trouble with her internet um so the other aspect what when i was doing a lot of healings um I would find that the palms of my hands would go very, very blotchy. And I knew then that there was something that there was a healing that needed to be done. And we could do it in different ways too. So Adora is going to come back with, with the ways that she can do it. And I will just go in and keep on chatting while we're waiting for her to come back. Um, so one of the ways that I used to do it, I would channel positive energy through my crown chakra and I would send them out through my palms. Now, like we were just saying, when you put your palm on an area or your hand on an area that's been hurt, like a child, ah, here she comes. We, we see that that's working. So hang on, here she comes. Hi, Adora. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm just, um, just talking about vibrational healing. And, you know, when you were saying about putting your hand on, on the palms and, and I was explaining how I used to do my healings, which was very similar to that. But we want to keep going with you because I'm not here to talk. You are. Um, this Sorry is about that. I don't know what happened. Uh, look, it's happened before. If it if it happens again, doesn't matter. Just just jump back on and we'll get okay. there. Great. So we've talked about vibrational healing. Um, I want to go into a little bit more. You you talked about plants as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk a little bit more about that. And why I want to talk about that is because I, I do flower readings. So it's all about plants for me. Um, mm. But what is um, the plant level? So we've got, you've talked about vibrations, how that works as a healing. How does the plant go? We'll talk about the plants and then I want to go into the essential oils. So let's go with the plants. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, working with the plants is such an incredible passion of mine. And in fact, I am a, a huge proponent for working with crystals as well. And it's very interesting to note that the um, plant kingdom and the mineral kingdom are quite different, right? There's varying levels of consciousness, and yet together they work in such a beautiful and symbiotic fashion. When we're looking at the plants, there is such a tremendous wealth of information, intelligence, medicine, life force, love, wisdom that is imparted and available to us to be able to heal the deep places within us. And I mean, everything from our soul to ourselves. And the, the plants have such a wisdom, each one having a unique energy signature, a unique vibrational patterning. And of course, as we know from a biochemical perspective, uh, unique chemical uh, constituents. Um, so when I work with a plant, I love to make teas. Teas is actually how I got into herbal medicine, plant medicine, to resolve my own um, health crisis as a teenager with bronchitis, making my first medicinal tea with hyssop and thyme and eucalyptus and fresh ginger um, was it it was a game changer it was a life changer for me and my respiratory challenges which i had had since i was a child and that's what brought me to eventually work with essential oils and flower essences and before we go into essential oils i just want to say something really um uh there is such potent alchemy with flower essences and, um, and there are so many different ways that we can make them, but when we invite in the vibrational patterning, it is such a brilliant medicine for our emotional body and our nervous system. And my training, my background, and how I infuse the gem and flower essences into the products is through working with the cosmic consciousness and vital life force of the plant. And then, and this is where it gets even more interesting, then we have the ability to shift the potency, just like with a homeopathic remedy, um, whether we're look, working with something from a very physical issue or all the way up to a 10 mm frequency when you're working at the core of the psycho-spiritual miasma, if you will, 
working at the higher frequency or energy bodies to be able to clear imbalances from that level so they trickle down to our mental, emotional, and physical bodies. So I wanted to, to just put that out there because uh, you mentioned you work with flower essences and what a joy it is to, to be able to receive their potent medicine and their spirits. Absolutely. And I like the, th the fact that the way you were talking about that, because when, when we go to the regular doctor and we, they're, they're looking at all that physical side to us, it, it's really challenging when you start taking that, me that medicine or the, the drugs, whatever it is, how that is, that may help you in that physical aspect, but what is the damage that it's doing on so many other levels. Whereas when you're working with the, the plants, you're working with crystallitics, um, and yeah, like I said, I work with both of them. I love them because they're so subtle and they're working on such a deep level mm. that you are just generally, it's just, uh, how, how can I explain it? When, you, when you're working on that real base, on that real foundation, naturally it's going to flow right through into the physical. It's gotta, it's gotta flow into that way. Yeah. It doesn't have a choice. If you're changing the foundations, it's going to change the whole structure on, on everything else. And that's what you're looking at with the with the um, crystal elixirs and with the um, the flower essence too. And, yeah, like I said, I, I love But the funny thing is, um, Adora, I used to make crystal elixirs when I had the natural therapies clinic, which was back in the 90s, I started making crystal elixirs. Did not know. Obviously, it was it was channeled. Uh, it was um, channeled to me because I had no idea what I was doing, and for some reason, I had to make them under the full moon. It mm. had to be under the full moon. Yet, I know flower essence are done in the full sun. So, yes. yeah, and it, so I had to do the the crystal elixirs under the full moon. Mm. And again, I had no idea what I was doing. You sort of felt like. Not, not a. I felt like an alchemist. It was like I was creating yeah. stuff, and I had no idea what I was doing, but I couldn't help but follow what I was doing. And then when I'd have clients come in, and I would just give this away because I, you know, to me, the value wasn't in it because I made it, mm -hmm. and so I started giving. And then I started getting that feedback, and people started coming back to me just for the crystal uh, um, essences. So um, it was really crystal licks, as I used to call them. It, so it was really, it, it was my sort of aha moment. I tested, I tried it. I'm a theory tester. So I tested, I tried it, and I was starting to get these lovely um, recalls back. So it started to make sense for me. And, and one of the things I do say to people that are listening to the podcast, that are, are reading books and everything else, take out what you want. Have a try of the, the flower essence. Have a try of the crystal. They may not work for you. They may not resonate with you. But, you know, have a test. Have a try. All right. So now we've, we've had an understanding of what vibrational medicine is. We've got this, this clear that we, we can do it through many different ways. We've had a little chat about crystal elixirs and bark uh flower essence so now let's get into the essential oils because this mm. is beautiful <laughs> awesome well the first thing i want to say about the essential oils is that they are the most potent form of plant medicine oh. and yes and so if you think about it from the biochemical perspective um every drop of essential oil like i have this very tiny bottle of Rose Auto here, very, very expensive, one of the most expensive, rare and precious aromatics. But if you think about each precious drop that comes from that, each drop contains the full gamut of the chemical constituents. In the case of Rose, it's in the upwards of 300 chemical components, which is why it makes it so difficult to replicate uh, aromatically in the lab. And so most people have never actually smelt true rose oil because it is so um, not only costly, but there, you know, it's not an unlimited supply because these essential oils come through partnership with Mother Earth. And so each year there's only so much plant material grown and harvested and then distilled. Mm -hmm. And as we know rose has an incredible demand on it. Um, but from the perspective of the each drop, it also represents the quintessence of the plant, the life force, the vibrational patterning. 
And so even when you think of rows, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of rose flower that it takes to make a very minute amount of the essential oil is mm. profound, right? Mm. And that's why the essential oils are so costly and also why they differ in, in cost. Um, for example, I have a bottle here of black pepper. Now, this, of course, comes from the uh, table seasoning that we all know and generally love, black pepper, um, piper negrum. And uh, this essential oil for this size bottle is maybe only $25. So you can see there's quite a difference in cost depending on um, so many variables, everything from how much material it takes to produce the yield, the result in essential oil. Black pepper is one of my favorites because it helps to induce beta brain waves, right? Which oh. are all about mental acuity, focus, concentration. So this is a wonderful aromatic to have either um, at your office or for your uh, you as a student or young students that you have at home to be able to blend into um, an aromatic that can be used to activate um, cognitive function. And so here's another aspect of essential oils. And, and this, if there is one thing that your listeners took away from today's wonderful conversation, Susan, it would be how potent essential oils are via inhalation uh, because of all our olfactory senses connecting to the amygdala and limbic centers of the brain. These areas uh, regulate so much of our physiology, but specifically mood, memory, and emotion. And mm -hmm. so if you think of maybe something that you smelt when you were young, maybe it was fresh cut grass or like a pumpkin or apple pie or for me, it was a lavender rose soap at my grandmother's um, at her home. Now, whenever I smell that, I am immediately transported back into her living room. I can see the wooden credenza of the kitchen. I can smell that wood from the credenza even. But more than that, I, I feel a sense of being loved and nurtured deeply because of the connection that we had. And, and with that, I come into a state of not only calm, right? If my blood pressure was high, it lowers. I come into a, a state of openness and receptivity. And mm -hmm. so this is just a, a wonderful example of the limbic system and how when we inhale the right essential oil, the pure essential oil, which is paramount, that we not only make, create a new memory cell within the brain, so we can use that for positive affirmations, we can use that for time for meditation, for other sacred intentional practices, we can use that to repattern our neural pathways, to heal the past and illuminate our brightest futures. Um, and we can also, using it for from a healing perspective, um, whatever meditation or healing energies we receive after we've inhaled that with our intention at the end of the cycle, whether it's a cycle of study, prayer, meditation, or what have you, inhaling that same essential oil will close the memory cell. And because the limbic system is that lock and key connector, when you smell that essential oil again in the future that energy, that memory, that intelligence, that information, that frequency, that vibration is unlocked. Yes, so, I absolutely agree. Uh, and, and that last bit when you're talking about the meditation, because I've got this little bottle of essential oils, it's a little roll, the little roll-on bottle, mm -hmm. and it's a meditation one. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to myself when I got it, I'm not going to use that, even though I love the smell of it, I'm not going to use that for anything else but meditation and it's this is one of those areas that can really really help you because I put that on as soon as I put it on because it's my meditation scent if that makes sense yes. straight away I'm in that meditative state yes. you know straight away I feel it and I know and even with even with perfumes I know they're not essential oils but you know how you put on your, your, your favorite perfume to go out with as soon as you put that on, you have that uplifting feeling, oh, I'm going yes. out, you know. But um, much prefer 
uh, essential oils and perfumes, but it's the same principle when you're talking about how we smell it and how that affects our brain and how that affects us. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, before we go any further, if you want to have a discovery call with um, Adora as well, you can get her on her website, so adorawinquist.com. Um, there is a, a slash, and you'll see that in the um, a slash. That sounds funny. You know, <laughs> there is a, an extra bit, but if you can get onto her website, at least you'll find it there. Um, and we'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, so so that makes that makes sense. So these these essential oils are affecting us in that way. So they can put us straight into a a good mood or straight into that area, and we yeah. can we can help you know start to change things up as we go. All right, so we we need to get into a little bit more about um, how that's going to help us with our intuition. Yes. Or have we, hey, I know what I was going to ask you. When you're talking about the black pepper and you're talking about that as far as helping you do, when you're doing, I put it down as when you're doing study or research, the black pepper yes. is going to help you with that. Would that help you? Like, okay, so you're in doing uni, you, 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 they're doing your study and your research. If you use the black pepper a year later, would that help you recall some of the things that you were yes. doing? Exactly. So that it just as your beautiful story with the meditation oil speaks to the power of the limbic system, whatever essential oil formula, like one with black pepper that you make as your study, or your research or whatever your activity is, you target it for that. So you inhale it before you do your study your research material, you then when you're done, close the book, or shut the computer down, you inhale it again to close that memory cell. And then in the future, to access that information, that intelligence, you inhale the same essential oil again. Oh, wow. And it all floods to the surface. So I wish I'd known that when I did my uni. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So that just speaks to the potency, the versatility with the essential oils by inhalation. Not to mention that from the perspective of um, shifting our mood in the moment when we know that, okay, during the day, I'm going to have moments where I get overwhelmed. I might get anxious. I might feel a little bit down. Um, I might feel scattered. I might feel disconnected. I might feel alone. And when I have my essential oil formula here and I inhale it, I can literally, because of that connection to the brain and the nervous system, I can literally shift how I feel in the moment. And then, of course, think of it, the more that we use that, the more we're able to shift the trajectory of our emotional response in the future. Yes. And then, of course, what happens that just creates a bridge to allow for the highest aspects of who we are to surface naturally. Wow. What what I really like about this is you, you're turning on and you're turning off almost, you know, like you, you close brackets almost. Yeah. Um, that's, that's something I didn't know because I would be I would be doing my study um, and I'd have the, say, uh, an aromatherapy that was um, to help with the brain or, you know, to help with memory, something to that effect. I didn't, I wasn't aware that I should turn it off and just use it when I was doing that because I would use it anytime thinking yeah I don't remember that you know right. whereas when you're turning it on and turning it off it makes it it, it, it brings it all into a, a sort of a compact doesn't it and it then exactly. it allows you to turn it on and turn it off whenever you need to exactly for example every Thursday I lead a meditation at 7 p.m EST in fact it's open to anyone it's complimentary we have folks that join in from Australia and New Zealand and every week I profile one essential oil and one crystal. And okay. so even if the um, attendees don't have that particular oil, but they have one that they like to work with, we use it at the beginning of the meditation and then we close it at the end of the meditation with the, the knowledge and the caveat that you can come back to that energy, that frequency, that in that intelligence within you whenever you smell that same aromatic again yeah and see the other thing is too that we've um I, i've been i've got essential oils we've got them from locally around here but you know they say oh you can use this for this and use this for this and you and i sort of think well you've got so many 
But when you say to open and close them, this is my big aha moment, folks. This is an aha moment for me. When that. you say open and close them, it makes sense to have those different types. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I didn't I didn't put that in there. You know, people say, oh, use the eucalyptus for if you've got, you know, runny nose or whatever, you know, getting a cold. But it was like, oh, you just keep on sniffing it. What what are we doing? But when I have that mindset that Okay, I'm 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 taking this because I want to heal, and then okay, now I'm going to go and do something else. So I'll take it again, I'll smell it again, and I'll close that off. You know, you're healing, and off I go, and yes. you know, start the next thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you start to know, you start to begin to build a relationship with the plants yourself, with the yes. essential oils, and you begin to listen to them, and they begin to guide you into all of the facets of healing that they can offer you that you are not necessarily going to find in any book or manuscript, even mm -hmm. mine. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, goodness me. That is so cool because I have had some that I've gone, I just want that. I don't know why I want that, but I want to have that one and I'll, I'll just take it. Yes. Um, so when you're talking about books, you have got a book too out the door and it's called Your Soul Work is Your Soul Work, spelt two different ways. Um, well, hang on, I'll just put you on big screen so everyone can see it. Thanks. Actually, um, I didn't catch that, but the soul, your soul work is your soul work is my kind of overarching intention. The book is called Detox, Nourish, Activate, Plant and Vibrational Medicine for Energy, Mood and Love. And oh. it's co-authored with Dr. Lulu Shemek, my colleague with the plants, plant ally. And this yeah. book is really like a revolutionary guide to healing, to transforming your life to curating your own path of self-mastery with 11 different types of alchemy, including essential oils and crystals and herbs and nutrition and meditation and the essences as well. Um, but specifically how energy relates to the adrenal system, mood, of course, relates to the brain and the nervous system, and then the heart relates to love. And then the detox, nourish, activate is a play on words, if you will, for healing at the DNA level. And also the importance of detox, letting go, cleansing out old habits, whether it's things that we think, things that we do, things that we put in in our body or around it, uh, ways that we can nourish ourselves because um, the nourishment piece is crucial. Our self-love, our self-forgiveness, our self-care, our self-compassion, are what truly transform our lives and elevate um, ourselves to our highest path and purpose, which is where the activation comes in, right? Activating mm -hmm. our life force, activating our quintessence, really coming to understand that your soul work is your soul work because there is a unique light and gift within you that only you can bring to the world after you reach a certain point within your own healing journey and self-understanding. Yeah. Wow. I, I want to, okay, can we, cause I'm just watching the time um, for the book. Can we, can you, they find that on your website? Yes. On adorewinquist.com and also mm -hmm. Amazon. And I know that it is sold in Australia. My um, publisher is in London. So it's also sold in Europe at aonbooks.co.uk. Yeah, um, but all of that information. If we, the website, if we all take you to the website, yeah. you'll be able to find it. That's the main thing. Otherwise, we'll just bombard them with names and numbers. I know. <laughs> what now? Okay, let's get to the nitty gritty of running out of time, getting low on time. I want to know the three, because um, we talked about the, the essential laws. Did you said in your um, in your bio or in the the, the um, bio that there was three essential laws that was really good for enhancing our intuition? Okay. Yes. I want to know the three essential oils um, or with, whether they're blends or what they are and how they're going to help us because we're getting a bit low on time. Fire Great. away. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So um, for the my top three essential oils to enhance your intuition, I'm going to go number one first with jasmine. Now, jasmine, you might think of, well, gee, that seems like a very floral, sensual um, aromatic, 
which is absolutely true. And because of that, because of its great affinity for um, accessing the sacral center and our emotional body, it brings us into deep communion with our own inner wise one and where we make the connection to self, right? Because we know that is the, the seat of our intuition, being able to be in communion, loving communion with ourselves. It also has quite an affinity for the Ajna, the third eye center. So oh. Jasmine is, it's almost a hypnotic, it's incredibly sensual, and it takes us out of the mind, which is really important when we're opening our intuition, because the first thing is we start to judge it. Oh no, that can't be true. Where did that come from? How do I yeah. know that? Do I know that? Did I just make that up? Yeah. So <laughs> aromatics that take us out of our our mind and bring us into a beautiful sensorial experience like jasmine are wonderful to enhance intuition so a jasmine grandiflorum um, one of my second favorites is galbanum galbanum you may or may not have heard of it no, it is kind of um on the the polar opposite aromatically because it is a a deep and earthy and rich aromatic that to me transports me to like the temples in tibet oh and so it is a wonderful aromatic for working with intuition when we're expanding it from that inner vision, right? In our inner mystic, galbanum mm -hmm. is an aromatic to deepen the connection with our own inner mystics, um, which is, of course- It sounds grounding, doesn't it? That, that yeah. The way, yeah, the way you're explaining it sounds very grounding. How do you spell gabana or galbanum? Um, galbanum is G-A-L- B A N U M. Yep. And you can also find that on my website as well, Galbana. Cool. cool. Yep. Okay. Now, number three. <laughs> okay. So, number three. And of course, it's always difficult to pick just three essential oils yes. for any, any, any um, topic. But I'm actually going to go with sandalwood and um, the New Caledonican sandalwood, which is an Australian sandalwood. Um, and or at least that these trees that they're planting because it, the sandalwood isn't produced sustainably in India anymore. Oh. Although it's the same trees that are planted in Australia and the surrounding area. And mm -hmm. um, it is aromatically quite similar and energetically quite similar. Now, the beautiful thing about sandalwood is it is um, deeply aligning. Right. And when we think about opening our intuition, we want to come to the depth of our being. Where does the aromatic of sandalwood come from? It comes from the center of the tree. It's produced oh, yeah. in the heartwood of the tree, sometimes taking decades to produce. And mm -hmm. so when we want to open to our intuition, we want to come deep into our place of centered alignment. And it is a wonderful aromatic. It has an affinity for all of the energy centers. Because as we know, our intuition, high sense perception, and psychic awareness plays into each individual chakra in a different way, right? When we think of intuition, we think of the solar plexus and we think of a vague sense of knowing about something. Oh, I feel like I need to stop at this store on the way here and then you meet someone or you think about someone and then the phone rings, right? And that's very different than the sense of direct knowing, which is a, a form of psychic awareness that moves through the crown chakra uh, where we just know things. There's no mm -hmm. way that we can know them. It's just information. We know it and it's accepted because we build that muscle of trusting ourselves. Right. And so, you know, there's so many different aromatics that we could we could talk about just essential oils and intuition, I think, for <laughs> hours upon hours and journey with that. But I invite you to join me on my weekly meditations and continue the meditative experience and building your intuition through the aromatics and crystals and vibration. Mm, that sounds wonderful. But yes, we are getting out running out of time. So you've got Jasmine, you've got Galbanum, and we've got Sandalwood um, for the three top ones for developing your intuition. Would you suggest if you did have those three to create your own little blend of it and then you could use that so as a turn on and turn off? 
Absolutely. Because whenever you create a synergy, um, the synergy is more effective, is more potent than an isolate, than a singular. Yes. So you could do just one drop of sandalwood. Again, with these aromatics, these are precious. One drop of jasmine and one drop of galbanum in just a small amount of your carrier or coconut oil. And then you can use that as an anointing oil. You can put it on, breathe it in, of course, for 30 to 45 seconds while you're forming your intention for whatever your intentional practice is going to be. And then you can also apply it to the third eye or other, you know, parts of the heart is a beautiful place as well. Mm. Coming into intuition in the heart is profound, especially for past life and Akashic readings. Um, and then, of course, inhaling that same aromatic when you're done to seal that memory within your being. Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, so we're running out of time. Um, any last little things that you want to share with us, uh, Adora, before we go, before we say goodbye? I would remind all of you that every single moment, every single step you've taken since your first, every breath you've taken since your first has brought you perfectly here and now. And you have an infinite potential within you that can be unlocked into this moment and the next moment and the moment after that and on and on and on. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you so much. Um, stay with me because I've, I've got to chat with you after this, um, but we'll we'll finish it off there. Um, whoops, hang on, wrong button. <laughs> it's meant to be me. Whoops. Um, oh, that was amazing. Okay, so we've got those three essential oils to help you there, but I love the idea of putting a little blend in it and making that especially for say your meditation or for when you when you want to set the intention um that is just perfect i love how that comes together and of course that's just for intuition but there's no reason why you can't jump onto adora's website and get an understanding of other things or join her in her uh her meditation Sorry. <laughs> it'll come out eventually um so guys subscribe like uh share the podcast um, connect with us. I'd love to hear how you're going, how it works. If you if you try these things, let us know how they're going because we sit here and talk to the screen and would love some feedback. We really, really love feedback. So that's really cool. But yeah. that's me for this week. Um, have a great week and we will see you next week. I'm saying bye for now and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.